I remembered that my soul chose to come to Earth. I remembered where I was before I was born. What made me come back was that I had agreed to do this before I was born. Why are we here? To learn to love. I was in a beautiful, beautiful field. The flowers were so vibrant and alive. And I realized I was looking at none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I found myself not only forgiving her, there was, there actually, after seeing everything so clearly and seeing why she was the way she was and who she really was on a soul level, after seeing that, there wasn't even a need to forgive her. It was just a big, oh, I get it now. So if I had committed a loving action, it was like love upon love upon light. A purely loving action was the most wonderful thing that I could ever achieved in my life. NDEs, or near-death experiences, are stories of those who have briefly crossed the threshold of death but were resuscitated. Testimonies reveal experiences of the realm beyond death. Decades of reports of NDEs from patients and doctors have been collected. Select experiences share esoteric insights into understanding the nature of the life after life and shine a light on the great questions of the human soul. When I asked him why, you, you, you said, why are we here? And I, I asked him that very question, you know, why, why did God make me? And he gave me an answer and I couldn't understand it. And I said, I don't understand you. And he said, well, let me put it in a way that you can understand it. He said that the world is like God's garden and God made you and everyone else to bloom in that garden and to be beautiful. And God made every one of you unique and special to um, be beautiful in your own way. Okay, I, I understand that. I mean, that's simple enough. <laughs> and a, another variation on that question, this is much later on in the conversation, when he told me that I had to come back to the world and I was trying to um, convince him not to send me back to this world. Uh, I asked him, what would I do if I came back to this world? And before he had a chance to answer, I said, you know, I'm an artist and I would like to build you a shrine. If I were to come back to the world, I'd like to build a shrine. And I said, I'd make this shrine so big and beautiful and bizarre that people would come from all over the world out of curiosity to see what it was about. And what they would find was it would be about you. And then that would make them think about you. And that's what I would like to do if I came back. And he said, I'd rather, he said, I'd rather you didn't do that. And I said, what? <laughs> you know, like, I said, people have been building shrines to you, you know, forever. You know, there's lots of shrines. Why can't I build a shrine? I'd like to build a shrine. I said, and he said, you spent so much of your life hiding out in the studio, avoiding people. He said, I would prefer it if you didn't avoid people by building this big shrine. And he said, the other thing is, he said, I don't really care about shrines. He said, you know, people like to build shrines. And he said, I understand that, that it makes them feel good. But he said, it does absolutely nothing for me or for God. We don't, we don't have any use for them whatsoever. He said, 
if if that's what amuses you, I guess that's what you got to do. But he said, don't do it for me. Don't don't deceive yourself in thinking that it's something that I want or need because I don't. I'm like, okay. Well, you shot down my idea. What's your idea of what would I do? And he said, love the person that you're with. And I said, okay, great. I'll do that. No problem. What do you want me to do? And he said, that I just told you what I want you to do. Love the person you're with. And I said, yeah, but after I do that, then what do you really want me to do? And he said, no, that is what I want you to do is love the person you're with. And I said, well, that's, you know, that's simple enough. That's easy. I do that. And he said, oh, really? Um, well, that's what I want you to do. And he said, um, that's enough. And I said, um, how is it enough? And he said, if you do that, he said, you'll change the world. And I said, oh, you want me to change the world? And he said, Exactly. That's what I put you in the world in the first place, to change the world. And I said, well, you know, there's been a lot of people that have tried to change the world and they um, usually turn out really badly. You know, and I said, I can think of examples like um, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong, you know, all of them wanted to change the world and, you know, they made it worse. If I go back and try and change the world, you know, why, why isn't it possible that I could make like a lot of terrible mistakes and make the world a worse place? And he said, the way that I want you to change the world is by love the person that you're with. And I said, wait a minute, that's a contradiction. You want me to change the world, but you want me to just love the person that I'm with? And he said, yeah, that's, that's the plan. That's the big plan. And I said, I don't see how loving the person that I'm with is going to change the world. And he said, if you love the person that you're with, then they will go out and love the person that they're with, and they'll go out and love the person that they're with. And he said, it'll be like a chain reaction, and people will, love will conquer the world, and everybody will love one another. He said, that's, that's the, the God's big plan. And I said, it's not going to work. And he said, why won't it work? And I said, because I love the person that I'm with. They walk across the street and get run over by a truck. You know, everybody gets angry and upset. And he said, he said, Brian, that, that happens, but um, it's really God's plan and nothing's going to stop it. It's going to happen. And I said, well, even if you had like a million people, I don't think it's going to happen. And he said, there's more than a million people in the plan. He said, there's a lot of people in the plan. And I said, well, from what I know of the world, you don't have enough. And he said, well, actually, we have all the angels who are in the plan. And he said, there's a lot of them. There's more angels than there are people in the world. And I said, so the angels are doing this? And he said, he said, there's millions of people, there's all the angels, and there's God. He said, it's inevitable. The plan is going to happen. And I said, if that's your plan, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll do it, but I just, I just don't really see much hope for it. And he said, well, because you just don't really know enough to see how it's going to happen. Okay. So my solution to everything is to love one another. And when I read the Bible and found out that that was um, written in the Bible, as Jesus' commandment, love one another. this is my commandment, that you love one another. And he said the same thing um, in other places, in other ways, but basically that's the, that's the program. I rapidly began to ask questions. Now, when I say ask questions, this isn't in the way we communicate in this world. It was as if the second I began to think the question, the answer was given to me in a multitude of ways. I would know it from its history, for its reasons it was happening. For instance, I said at one point, what is the meaning of life? And this being, who I personally believe was God, or at least a representative of God, if not God, 
himself communicated to me not the word love but the understanding of love an understanding of love that I really couldn't have had before because I just thought well love you know you love your mother you love your your dog you know uh, peace love you know all that but it wasn't that it was a love that was total and all-encompassing I asked many questions for instance uh, you know why are we here and I was told pretty much we, we banged on the door for this life our souls it sounds so philosophical, but we, we, our souls, or whatever you want to call it, insisted on being born. And that it was a, it was a, something we really wanted a lot. Let's start with the basics. Why, why are we here? Why are we here? To learn to love. How has this changed, Betty? When I was 31, I was a woman with a great deal of attitude. Um, I had, um, I was raised uh, in such a fashion to where I had a chip on my shoulder. I had a lot of anger, a lot of, um, uh, I was very judgmental. I judged everyone for whatever purposes. Uh, I went through what was called a ripple effect. And um, this ripple effect was like a life review. Uh, showing that what you do to others is going to come back to you. Not only will the pain that you cause them ripple back to its creator, you, but the pain that that these that others uh, create in in other people because of what you've done to them, that all comes back. Now, you know these are very profound lessons, but you know you know life is hard to do. It uh, is. What? Not what? all people are lovable either. It's, it's very, very difficult, difficult, isn't it? Yes, it is hard to love. So what help do we have? Uh, I learned that we all have guardian angels. Uh, as a matter of fact, I I had eight. Now I eight? thought eight. <laughs> and uh, I thought, um, am I a particularly tough case? And, um, and no, I am not. Uh, we all have many guardian angels that are around us. And not constantly, uh, they're imposing but um, you may have two or three at one time and during your deeper uh, darkest hours you may have eight or more and uh, they can they do not uh, interfere with your free will but uh, they try to encourage you to do the right things and always leading you uh, to and directing you towards the the right things in your path what made me come back was that i had agreed to do this before i was born and I was reminded of that while I was there. That you had more business left to finish. Right. <laughs> and I said to, there was a, at some point a womanly guide came and, and kind of helped me out. And I said to her, I don't remember agreeing to do this. And so she showed me on this kind of a screen in the sky of me standing in front of all of my family and friends agreeing to do certain things. And this was one of them. Um, there was a picture placed in my head of a memory of my original agreement of why I had come to earth to begin with. And it was like I, I remembered and I went, oh, right, right. I think, I think one of the things that I've thought about greatly is that one of the things that bothers me so tremendously about the metaphysical movement in lieu of my experience and in lieu of what I was shown which is a which I think if there's any message that I can give it's not about meditating and leaving your body and taking your light being out of this earth indeed not it is about bringing the light into this earth, stay here, be an anchor, let the light come in through you, into this world, don't abandon this world, we need you, we need you here, we need you to be present, and we need you to be open, with an open heart. 
with this understanding in this place that, that the body is in a way there as hard as it is to see and understand that true learning happens within the body because when we are in experience in this form there's something that evolves within us that can evolve within us um, at soul level that makes the body an important part of the whole that it you know that it isn't one's good and one's bad but that the two work together in an important way so that was very healing for me personally to come to a better understanding and in that moment i remembered that my soul chose to come to earth i remembered where i was before i was born i remembered that all of our souls choose to come here that this is a wonderful university that we're not here by random accident we're not here as victims that we come here to choose to study to learn and to grow and that on some level, this is like a wonderful theater. It's like a big university. We all play our part. And when our time to go comes, we leave. NDE accounts consistently affirm that for each of us, the overarching purpose of life is to learn to love. Through this life experience, the divine plan is that by loving the person we are with, the ripple effect will have the power to change the world. Normally, our greatest influence is with those whom we interact with day by day. Loving the person we are with includes people who are unkind or difficult to get along with. Many who have experienced NDEs learn that before we were born, we resided in a heavenly realm where we insisted on coming into this world to develop our ability to love. They also report that those yet unborn sometimes serve as guardian angels to watch over and assist us in our efforts to make loving choices. The kinds of challenges we experience here on Earth are designed to grow us in ways that we could not have developed in our prior state. NDEs show us that the physical body is a most useful tool in this process. They describe life on Earth as a university where we must learn how to treat one another with love and forgiveness to bring a greater measure of light into the world. Building upon our exploration of the purpose of life, in our next installment, we will explore the meaning of suffering.